Hello, beautiful friends. This is the Organizer Advisor here to help you enhance your happiness and transform your life. Today is Wednesday, summer solstice day, longest day of the year, um, but it's, um, it's a good day. We're halfway through the week and you know what day it is. It is hair conditioning day, so get your little shower cap. I just got my hair washed. I'm about to put on deep conditioner and let it sit while I do my cleaning for today. We can multitask if, as long as we're doing self-care. Okay, so grab your hydration beverage and let's have our daily motivational, inspirational talk to keep us motivated to keep up instead of catch up. Okay, so sorry for my hair. It's damp. And I wanted to get this video out because I'm a little late. It was give your horse a bath day today. So um, the horses got baths. I'll post pictures of them because the little pony is, she's a white pony and it's the whitest she's ever been. And of course it's rained since then. So I'm sure she's just a muddy mess now. But we did get a bath in this morning with the sunshine. It was great, but I fear she's going to be a muddy mess anyway. Um, so, I mean, when it's hair conditioning day, it's hair conditioning day for all of us. So the horse has got a little hair conditioning in their manes and tails. So there you go. All right. So other beauty routines. Remember exercise 30 minutes. I've kind of slacked off a little bit. I got to get back on the treadmill and, um, Remember to hydrate. It's so important to keep your energy level, your mental clarity, helps you sleep better at night, flushes all those toxins out of your body as you exercise. Guess what? Home caring is exercise. As you're cleaning, you're burning calories. So I think it's about 400 calories an hour worth of cleaning. So put on those wrist weights or your ankle weights, put on some music, put your favorite playlist on, your dance music, and dust while you're dancing. It works okay so our rooms that we're cleaning today remember we're using a framework where we were spreading our cleaning out during the work week so that we just focus on a couple of rooms a night so that we can keep up instead of catch up because my goal is to help you preserve your time off for time for rejuvenation relaxation cultivating joy having fun with loved ones friends, family, and pets. So if you're spending every weekend just trying to catch up, get your house clean, get all the laundry done, you don't have time for you and you don't have time for cultivating joy. You're exhausted and you're like a hamster on a wheel. And I've been there and it you just end up being in an existence, not thriving. And my goal is to help you thrive because when you're thriving, you're happy. And there is a way to do this where you can be happy. Okay, hair care day, when our hair is healthy and it looks shiny, it's uplifting and we feel good about ourselves. Exercise, hydrate, vitamins and supplements if you subscribe to that practice. Um, eat clean and take time for stillness. Power nap 10 minutes, close your eyes for 10 minutes. Meditate, read scripture, find time for prayer, whatever you do that helps kind of just calm your body and your brain it really is important take a walk just get out in nature look at lay out on a peach towel in your yard and watch the clouds just take time for stillness it's really important it is a form of self-care okay so those are our health and beauty routines for today so i hope you take time for self-care it is so so important to the way you look and feel. Now, let's move on to what is our cleaning activity. Get those ankle weights, wrist weights, get your dust um, rag or 
you're dusting cloth, you're swifter, and um, we're going to focus on kids' rooms today or a spare bedroom if you don't have children at home. could be a guest bedroom. But I wanted to talk about kids' rooms. How many times do you tell your children clean your room? And they just don't ever seem to get it clean. Well, first of all, they may not have the skill. And second of all, they may be in a microcosm of overwhelm, just like you are in your home. So just go into your child's room and look at what's out. Toys, blankets, books, pillows, stuffies, what's out? A couple of reasons why children cannot get their rooms clean, even if they have the skill. There's way too much stuff for a small space, and there's no place to put things. They may not have a dedicated space, and they may just be in constant states of overwhelm with too much stuff. Too much stuff is stressful. Quite honestly, too much stuff is usually why people come to my channel because they're overwhelmed. It's a constant state of overwhelm by being surrounded by clutter and it's unsettling and it causes stress. Your children have the same situation. We tend to overindulge our children with toys and they get gifts for their birthday and Christmas and or holidays and then it just tends to accumulate. They have clothes that don't fit. They've got a closet stuffed. They may have shoes everywhere. They may have just lots of stuffed animals because they're cute and cuddly and we feel it comforts them. Well, here's a suggestion. Been there, done that. And I felt it wasn't fair to ask my children to clean their room if it was just too much. And if they can't pick up their room reasonably in about 10, less than 10 minutes, five to eight minutes to just pick up and put stuff away, they're overwhelmed. It's too much stuff. So here's my solution. Get you some bins. This can be just plastic bins. You can get them for about $5. Sometimes you get them on sale. Usually at the beginning of the year, you get them on sale. These are just the plastic. You can do rubber mains. You can do the Sterilite bins, but you want a bin with a lid. Depending on how much stuff your child has is gonna be how much stuff, how big your bins are. Get four, four bins. Label them week one, week two, week three, week four. And then I want you to go in your child's room and they can help you. I want you to take some time and divide their belongings, all the items in their rooms, books, toys, stuffies, blankets, pillows, whatever, into those four bins. So each bin is going to have books, toys, a couple of stuffies, and then seal off week one, week two, week three. We're in week four now. So leave week four out. Put week one, two, three away. It can go in the garage, it can go under the bed. If you wanna get ones that go under the bed, it can go in the hallway closet, it can go you know, somewhere else where you just have removed three quarters of the stuff out of their room. They have one bin. Now they play with all of that stuff in that bin for that week. On Sunday, or it could be Saturday, could be Friday, whatever day of the week you determine, it could be the day that you clean your child's room, whatever works for you. You have a dedicated day, you go in there with your child and you pack up all that stuff, put it back in that bin for. I like to clean everything before I put it away, so I wash the stuffies, I wipe down the books, I sterilize the toys with my Listerine spray. And then I put that bin away and get out week number one. So for July, that whole first week of July, your child has a week one bin. And then they play with it that whole week. First of all, they haven't seen that stuff for a while. So they're more inclined to play with it it's kind of new and novel. Um, you know it, you know what it's like when you pack something away and then you unpack it and you're like, oh, I love this. They play with it for a week. We clean it, sterilize it, get it smelling nice, make sure it's germ-free, put it back in the bin at the end of that week, get out week two. Then they have week two stuff to play with. 
They can read those books. They haven't seen them for a while. Toys are new and novel. Almost, they'd almost forgotten they even had them. So you get the process at the end of week two, pack all of that stuff up, make sure it's clean, sterilized, ready to go into the bin, then get out week three. And just keep following this process. Now, as you're going through these items to put them in the bin, you're going to check them for safety. Number one, if they've got broken parts or sharp um, you know, pieces that have been broken off, like hard plastic that's broken, it's got a sharp piece, it needs to go. Recycle it. Um, if the pieces are loose, like you know, little matchbox cars or Hot Wheel cars and the wheels are coming off, that's a choking hazard. Get rid of it. Um, so you can start to assess these items. Also, your child can say, you know what, I think I've outgrown that. I'd like to donate that to somebody else. You can have a toy swap with some of your friends. If you know somebody that has younger children and your child has outgrown clothes, shoes, and toys, pay it forward. Pass it along to somebody else that can use it. Um, if you plan on having more children, pack them away in a box label it child's toys or child's clothes or whatever and put it somewhere where you and your child don't have to deal with it on a daily basis. This is going to help reduce the stress of your children. It's going to help facilitate a more positive relationship between you and your child because you're going to be less frustrated with your child and your child's going to be less frustrated in their environment. So when you then say go pick up your room they can put all that stuff in their bin. Now, here's a note. If you have really small children like toddlers, make sure they can't get in the bin with the lid because it is a suffocation hazard. But if you have children like seven, eight years old, they can pick up all of their stuff in less than five minutes and put it in that bin. That way it's not under the bed, it's not in the bottom of the closet. Now, while you're in there, we know how well this rainbow closet strategy works for us. It works for your children too. So you can just, the way I help my children go through their clothes, because children grow, children grow fast. They outgrow their clothes. We may not be aware of that. And that is just a lot of clothing in the um, closet that is overwhelming. So when you tell them put their clothes away, they got to fight to squeeze something in that closet. That's too much stuff. So uh, Winston's snoring, he's in his hideout. Um, what you can do is, is just kind of create the rainbow closet. And then what I do is I just hold up, yes or no. I just hold up the clothes, yes or no. You can check the sizes. I did a, a whole day with my grandson once, just going through his clothes and checking sizes. And I realized that he had two huge bags of clothes that didn't fit him. So that was just clutter. That was chaos for him. It wasn't functional. It was way too much stuff, and there was no way at his age he was going to be able to manage all that. So I just sit him on the bed and just say yes or no. Do you, do you wear this? Yes or no. <laughs> if it's not something they're going to wear, it's clutter. Just like you. If you're not going to wear it, if it still has tags on it and you haven't worn it, it's clutter. So that's a point where you just say, okay, if you're not going to wear it, there, there's no reason to keep it. Now, um, organizing their clothing by color helps facilitate your laundry strategy of wearing certain colors during the, at certain days of the week so that you can do a load of laundry at the end of that day and then you're done. So as we spread out our laundry through the week, no more piles of laundry on the weekend, we're not frustrated, we're not overwhelmed, we're done. Come Friday, we do our tidy Friday, our house is ready. We're done with laundry. We're done with, the, you know, straightening up the house. We don't spend our Saturdays or Sundays or whatever days of the week or your off time cleaning up and catching up. It's done during the week. Weekends or your time off is free. Okay, so that's my solution for children. Let's just recap. It's a lot to talk about. Health and beauty, decondition your hair. You can um, exercise, hydrate, vitamins and supplements if you subscribe to that practice, and eat clean, 
and take time for stillness. Those are our daily routines just to keep us psychologically and physically healthy. Two, our cleaning for today is going to be children's room or guest room, whatever functions for you. I have a guest room that serves as a child's room when my grandson's here. If your child has too much stuff, go get your four bins. You can go to Walmart, you can go to Dollar General. You can use bins that you already have. You can use laundry baskets if you need to. You can use bags if you need to. Just make sure you don't leave those bags in the room with your child. Divide their stuff into four different bins. Week one, week two, week three, week four. Each week when you go in to clean that room, that would be on a Wednesday, or it could be Friday when you clean the backpack, or it could be Sunday when you change the sheets. Whatever day works for you, rotate those bins. You're going to find that this strategy works wonders for facilitating a more positive relationship with your child, keeping your child from being overwhelmed, and it reduces arguments. I'm just going to tell you, it reduces arguments, which is positive for everybody. Also, the color for today is blue, and so if you are following our laundry system so that we can keep up instead of catch up, today we're wearing blue. Remember, we're systematically going through our wardrobe, wearing things. If they fit, great. Wash them, dry them, iron them if needed, make sure they're mended in ready wear condition, back into the closet they go. This works for your children too. So if you're following the rainbow closet strategy and you're wearing clothing each day for the colors for our system, your children can wear those colors too. So you can just say, go to the blue section of your closet and pick out something blue. And then that's going to streamline your laundry process. This makes life so much easier when you have children. Okay, I do want to give a shout out to um, somebody who wrote a really, really nice comment. I'm just going to say her name is Ju Juzanne, I believe. Um, and I just want to say thank you. Um, your comment really warmed my heart. I haven't responded yet. I'm just kind of sitting down to my computer right now. But I read your comment and I wanted to say how grateful I am because it really makes me feel positive about what I do here every day um, when I know that it's helping you. That's what this is all for because I have been in that position of being overwhelmed. I homeschooled my children for a while too and um, there were days I woke up and thought, how am I going to make it? And then I designed this system. I found a way that worked for me while I was a full-time, working full-time. I had children at home. I was running a small business and working on my PhD. I had very few moments to myself. And I felt like I was just existing until I developed this system and I put it into practice. And it saved me. I had a much healthier relationship with my husband, with my family, with my friends, and with myself. And I'll leave you on that note. I love you all for being here. Thank you so much for your kind words. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you back here tomorrow for Thoughtful Thursday. Have a great day. I hope these videos are helping to enhance your happiness and transform your life. If you like the content that I create, would you please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell in order to not miss a video. We'll be posting every day these inspirational, motivational videos in order to keep us focused on enhancing our happiness and transforming our life. I appreciate your help in getting the these videos out to more people by interacting. Please leave a comment. I love to hear your feedback. I love to know that some of these videos are helping you in your um, transformational process. This is the Organizer Advisor. I'm so grateful for your presence here and I thank each and every one of you. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.